of PSG. All right. Let's talk about the prerequisites of uh, CyberArk Vault installation in terms of software. CyberArk Vault installation prerequisites. In terms of hardwares, we have already talked about uh, that uh, it needs to be a Windows Server 2012 uh, or greater, um, or uh, it has to be a plain vanilla server without any uh, additional softwares installed or any antivirus or monitoring agent installed. Okay, all the network communication protocol needs to be disabled. Let's understand what do we need in terms of software to start the installation of the CyberArk Vault. The first thing we need is basically a master key, okay, master key. Master key is basically combination of recovery private key, recovery public key and server key. Okay. Master key is a combination of recovery private key, public key and server key. There will be a folder uh, which contain which will contain all these uh, keys. And uh, this master key is going to be used to create a master account. Okay. Used to create master account during the vault installation. During the vault installation, master key is going to be used to create a, a master account. By default, since master key contains all this uh, recovery, private key, public key, and server key, so it has access to all the information that you have inside CyberArk Vault. Okay, so all the saves that you create, all the accounts that you onboard, every single information this master key is going to have access to. Okay, this master account is going to have access to every single information. Why do we have such a powerful account only to be used in emergency situation? Okay, when you have, uh, uh, when let's say you are logged out of all the accounts that you can use to log into the vault and retrieve the information. Uh, if you uh, are logged out of all the administrative accounts, in those, those particular cases, you're going to use this master account. So master account will only be used in... Uh, emergency situations or break glass scenarios when you do not have any other option. Break glass scenarios. When you are logged out of every other account that you can use to log into the vault, only in that case, the master account will be used to retrieve the information. Otherwise, this account will not be used for regular operations. Apart from the master key, we need an operator key as well. Operator key is basically a combination of recovery, public key and server key. Does not contain the private key. Recovery, public key and server key. Operator key will be used to create operator account. During the vault installation, operator keys uh, key will be used to create an operator account. And this operator account will uh, be used in uh, component installation and upgradation. For every component that uh, you install in CyberArk architecture, there will be some users created on the vault, some uh, saves created, some configuration files would be created. All those work, all those creation of users, configuration files and uh, saves will be done by this operator account on the vault. Okay, so will be used in uh, component 
component as in PBWA or CPM or privilege session manager, any component of cyber so will be used in component installation and upgradation. Okay. This is what you have an operator key. And the last thing you need is a license file. Okay. Last thing you need is a license file. License file is basically an XML file containing the key of the CyberArt software. Basically how any licensing file works, right? It contains the key of the software and without that license, you, without that key, you wouldn't be able to move forward with the installation. So you'll need that uh, license key. And that's something that is contained in the license.xml file. This uh, file along with uh, containing the keys of the software, it also contains the number of users. Okay, number of uh, users that are allowed to access CyberArk systems in order to retrieve the privilege account information, right? So, how many end users you can allow in your infrastructure? That is something that will be contained in a license file. And uh, let's say if you are, uh, if you calculated a certain number of users and in future you have a requirement to extend the number of users, you need to purchase another license file from the uh, CyberArk vendor. And uh, all you need to do is update that license file inside the CyberArk vaults configuration saves. We'll talk about that, how it works but uh, you do not have to reinstall the vault or reinstall any component. Okay? All you need to do is uh, update a simple license file if you are looking for extensions, right? So license file contains the number of end users that are allowed to access CyberArk systems uh, in order to retrieve the privilege account information. Along with that, it contains one more limitation. License file also contains the number of components that you are allowed to install. So how many front end UI, how many PVW you can install in your CyberArk architecture? How many policy manager component you can install? How many session manager component you can install? All those limitations is going to be contained in the license file. So this is what you need in terms of uh, a prerequisite. You need to have uh, all these uh, uh, keys and licenses available. Only then you would be able to move forward with the installation. Yeah. Okay, if not, uh, let's talk about services that you can have in the world. Uh, services are basically, let me open.